there's this huge volume and real-time nature of social media analytics plus loads of social analytics listening monitoring tools that are out there that makes this very overwhelming. Hence, there's this spotlight on, is, oh, it's social being able to do this or do that. But rarely you get, you get uh, questions from senior management to say, oh, we just spent about $3 million on an event. How, ma how many leads has that event brought to us? Um, so social media can be the most measurable channel, but also the most difficult, but also one that is always a, a, a hot topic to debate. Um, so you have not come to Heathrow to, for me to tell you that for most B2B companies, uh, we are investing more heavily on LinkedIn. Um, Twitter is proving useful for us for specific influencer uh, engagement and targeting. goes without saying that um, there's obviously other channels that we use to, to, to uh, look at, but here's a range of metrics that's most commonly used. You can't really see it, but audience engagement, lead generation, visitor, visitor frequency, etc. Um, and then added to that complexity at the bottom of the slide, which you can't see as well, which is really the point of this slide, there's a whole range there out there. Content downloads, fans, followers, mentions, etc. Um, it is simply complexing. It's hard to measure them all unless you have a a massive budget or a number of social content agencies to help you. So my suggestion is start with five to seven uh, short-term and long-term metrics, which you can at least have a baseline set of metrics on. Some of the long-term ones include higher likelihood to recommend, higher retention scores, brand tracking, customer satisfaction scores, etc. So when we started, we used literally a simple table and a, co a, co a content scorecard using things like Bitly, Google Analytics, etc. Um, and we set a level of benchmarks for what is worth at least it helped us to prove how we're improving or not over a set period of time across what I mentioned, reach, engagement and conversion. We mapped in things like LinkedIn engagement rate and that means it, it starts to tell a, an idea of, gives us an idea on what sort of topics, market challenges, issues that at least our prospects are interested to read about. Um, in terms of conversion, I was really interested to look at how many people who landed on a specific landing page um, had actually converted to give their data to download um, a white paper or watch a video, etc. Because that's a ratio that can be used to compare across all your other channels. Um, did someone mention social analytics? Because uh, Simply Measured uh, says that this year is where marketers focus on using social analytics to, to, to to drive business decision with a combination of data and visualization. They start to, you know, we talked about social listening very briefly earlier because it is a complex, crowded marketplace. Some of you probably have tools already in place. We, are, we had struggled for about six months because once you talk to one, you end up talking to five and then you don't really, you can't really figure out which one is better versus the others. Um, the G2 crowd grid for social media monitoring attempts to do this by mapping 12 providers in this space, grouping it by market presence and satisfaction across four categories like leaders, high performers, niche and contenders. Um, I think there is no one size fits all approach. You need to, to filter down to three to four. Um, think about the resources that you have, the data, the, the data methodology and, uh, and of course the, the, cost pro the cost structure of the, some of these platforms that can help you to drive insights to give you a bit of uh, analysis into what your market is talking about. 95% um, um, demand gen, a, obviously a research firm, uh, uh, says that 95% of today's business decision makers in B2B pick the suppliers, which gives them ample content throughout every stage of the decision buying journey. Uh, I was with LinkedIn two weeks ago as well, and they said that, yes, the, ver the, the number varies, it's 35, it's, uh, but they said that the, num the average number of touch points before a decision is made is 7 to 10. But yet, the shocking stat is that, uh, I think it's a content marketing institute, 60 to 70% of all B2B uh, content has never been viewed. They've never seen, just creates, created stuff, right? White papers, brochures. <laughs> They've never been viewed. The number one cited re reason is because it's, it's, it wasn't relevant for their target audience. It goes back to the basics. So this chart gives you a bit of insight into, look, if you were to create uh, you know, some B2B content, <coughs> it compares the most effective types of content with the most difficult to create. Fairly interesting. So blog articles, case studies, videos, infographics, most effective. 
Um, and if, you, if your content audit shows that you're heavy on these, perhaps you're on the right path. Uh, we've all been there. We've been part of crea creating white papers. We've done interviews. We have, we have spent months and weeks with the design team and we've created white papers. It's ranked fourth as the most effective, but one of the most difficult to create as well. So perhaps this chart will start to challenge the way that you think about content marketing for social beyond just white papers. Yeah. We do quite a few videos now, um, and I like them, but I'm always suspicious of the B2B context because when people are at the desk, you can't, I mean, you've either got to wear headphones or make a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. what, what's your experience been in where do people actually watch these videos when they're in the office? And is, that, is that just me not getting it? I think it's uh, down to where do you think with your research the video fits into your, your this, this respective stages of the, this, the customer buying process. Look, we talked about being customer centric. I think we all need to get better at it. We need to get better at it. So this particular video, why is this topic relevant for that particular persona? If it's about big data, if it's about the internationalization of the RMB in China, why is this relevant? Because for, for us, we are seeing that videos are best suited for discovery. That we are at least in the conversation, say versus Bloomberg, versus Dow Jones, versus Factiva, whoever is out there. Then the vi uh, from stats that we've seen, videos are not really part of the uh, consideration phase, etc. but it's uh, during the, um, the kind of retention stage. It also helps them to feel that they have gone to the right partner because at the end of the day, we sell the soft solutions I mentioned. We're selling the industry insights. We know the market, etc. I think you need to dig you know, most, most companies need to dig deep into why you even produce that video and why you fit into that particular, particular stage. But perhaps this matrix helps to answer some of that because it goes into different content bits and it talks about where it fits into the <laughs> spectrums of emotional, rational versus awareness and purchase. So if your content audit says that if you are heavy on infographics, press releases and guides, surely you could be doing more in terms of helping your prospects take the next step um, with data sheets, price guides, interactive demos, case studies, so lots of different ideas here to get you uh, get your uh, get, get your content plan accelerated. So I thought it would be a really useful checklist. Ten minutes, um, target audience, macro themes, competitors. But I think the one tip which I that has really banded the teams together was the content task force, which I host um, every week, where we bring in people from sales, data teams, IT teams, the research teams, for them to brain for us to brainstorm and to map out a three to four month content plan which would go into our blog. Um, uh, there's been many blogs, I think 80% of the stats to say that there's been, 80% uh, of blogs have five posts or less. It's a shocking figure. So are you in the 80% or 20%? So there's a real opportunity for company blogs to be the centerpiece of your lead nurturing and lead uh, generation activities. Um, and don't forget about the power of your headlines because I, do, I truly believe that the headlines are now the new banner ads. Um, and that's the first thing that in that micro moment of whether or not we're going to start looking at that video, it's going to be that blog post, it's going to be analysis, etc. Um, and obviously optimize your story to think about something that has bring out an emotional aspect from a story no matter whether it's, it, whether it's in a business to business context. Um, because I think that if the headline is the new Banner ads, the visual is the new headline. We've heard stats again. Um, you know, our brain uh, processes visual 60,000 times fast, faster than text. So optimize your content for maximum visual impact. I'm a big fan of a uh, illustrator called David McCandless. He has two books called The Information is Beautiful. The other one is Knowledge is Beautiful. But he says that uh, what makes a good visualization is a combination of honest, accurate data mapped out with a meaningful, relevant story which has a purpose, which is a usable goal. There's a point to that infographic, which all obviously bring binds together into a harmonious visual design. Uh, interesting philosophy to have. So I thought I'll show you a few examples of um, how we've created some of these infographics ourselves. Um, lots of ways that we're really trying to tackle and map in into your micro moment of saying, yep, I just want to hook you with a little infographic or it's just a scribble or it might be a tag cloud, etc. Uh, because I think if, if content is king, one of the challenges is that we've created this blog post, uh, we've published it, we've wait, waited days and weeks, the content doesn't magically just uh, find its own audience or go viral. So co if content is king, it's mentioned many times, distribution is King Kong. 
Uh, I mentioned earlier, LinkedIn, obviously, we're investing the most heavily on 